subscribe to the Danny Houston podcast, man. Man, talk about um, and we'll, we'll stay with with your solo, man, because you got one in with Hawk before he passed away, man. And Dallas Block, <laughs> you you know what's that's sad. I didn't remember that at yeah. this time when you asked me. Again, I'm overwhelmed by Mr. Don even having me here, y'all. Um, after the club, first this was supposed to be on a compilation record, right? And I forgot there was some other people on this song or taking off the song or something. And it was another one of those songs where I, I didn't want to put it out. Hmm. Uh, this is, a, I had a crazy C. We had a conversation about it. I said, I don't want somebody thinking I'm trying to get over because this is after Hawk, he's passed. And she's like, bro, the song is dope, man. You, you got to put it out, Hatter. And you, you got to quit worrying about somebody hating you or being mad at you if it's good music. If it was somebody else, if it was any other person in the city, they would put that record out. And he said, you're over here with this hit and you're second guessing it. Don't do it. Just let's put the record out and whatever happens, happens. So that was a lot of the conversation with Simon. I was really reluctant to put that song out. I did, however, truthfully, I thought it was a hit though. Just because I thought... Again, it was another on purpose song. Like in the down south, it was on purpose. I have the longest, you know, as the mm -hmm. song sets inside the, the true length of the record, which really is three minutes. The last minute and a half, that's really the extended mix, to be honest with you. But uh, After the Club was the same way. My rap at the beginning was intentional. I knew that that track was banging, and I wanted to start that track. And I wanted to say the stuff that I said because I just I knew that women would feel a particular way about that song. Still to this day, man, I, I had a woman a couple of weeks back say, oh, I love that song so much. I love that part about the scratch <laughs> because I got stretch marks and it made me feel OK that a woman could have her stretch marks and still be sexy. And I knew that was going to be a win because I think a lot of times women overthink this because we men. I don't care about that yeah, little scratch. That's that's just a sweet mark to me. <laughs> I ain't tripping on that, dog. I'm happy that we here together right now. So I knew that women would resonate with that. And then the way Dallas Blocker just sang on that. Mm -hmm. he, he, and, and then Hawk is the legend and people wanted him. And then he just said some magic. Cause I, man, he, he just went off on it. And I, I always thought it was interesting. Uh, I had a, a friend of mine at the barbershop in the heyday of that song. And it was. And he said he was sitting there, and these guys were in there debating. Man, I know Hatter didn't write that. Man, Hawk <laughs> wrote that verse for. And I didn't look at it. I wasn't angry about that. I felt honored. Like, oh, y'all thought that somebody Hawk else wrote, wrote my. It. Yeah, you thought Hawk wrote my part. Like, man, I must be really did good. I must be really. And <laughs> was I was I a student of Hawk at the time? Probably so. So my phrasing and the in the way that I positioned myself on the track. It had a hawk-like feel to it, and it was done purposely. I didn't mind, you know what I'm saying? But I always thought that that was kind of, I thought that was kind of cool. That was another big, you're right, man. That was a, that was a. Uh, that was a rotation, man. That was, a, that was, a, that was the song that I was telling you when I saw the research. Mm -hmm. this, my boss had to prove the research to me because I got angry because she was playing it. And I was like, I don't want that song in rotation because as soon as the song got played, every time something of mine got played, oh, the hey, had her, yeah. the, hey uh, he was always playing this stuff. No, I'm not playing nothing. I don't. I can't come here and play what I want to play. Hmm. That's what you don't know. If these songs that you know, at, especially still to this day, radio is a highly researched thing. They're not taking no chances. That's why they don't play most of your music. They ain't not taking no chances. And what people, what hurt me is people don't take into account that you probably work. Hmm. Like nobody was there when I was going, I was going to the clubs every night, all night long, hanging out until the DJ would play my record and then go to work all day long. You know, so I was putting in steps. I was working on my records. And even though somebody might feel like, you know, I had some unfair advantage, uh, you could feel that way. Hmm wasn't true i earned all that i worked hard on it and some of these other rappers they saw me when i was at radio stations out the city because they'll be getting the interview and as soon as they going out they see me coming in i was out on the streets i was out on the road working just like them and you know you you just you have to learn 
to be at one with the hate, but you don't necessarily have to like it. You know what I'm saying? But I understand it. You're angry because you think somebody else is supposed to get that spot. And I always feel like that's my whole career. My whole career was you were supposed to get my spin. You were supposed to be the DJ here, not me. I didn't deserve anything. I didn't work for anything. It was just given to me. I didn't earn anything. And I'm like, I'm cool with that, though, because as long as I know. But does it sometimes sting a little bit? Sure, I'm a human being. It does. But you have to get over it and, you know, like water on the back. You just got to let it go, man. But yeah. that was a good song. Yeah. That was a good song. I got yeah. a couple of lucky ones in there, you man. No you, you've, been a, you've been a part of some classics because uh, you didn't rap on here. But that uh, we going to uh, take us a blowing big break and get back to this little kiki. Uh, I was lucky. On that Don't Mess With Texas, man. I was lucky. Like, I don't, second song on the album. I like, don't top even of the think, album. Here's the funny thing. I don't even think Kiki really knew who I was. Because Kiki wasn't no radio station listening to But you dude. was had her, though. Anybody from Houston, I mean. Maybe. That, that's, that's 97. That been, By that time, that you could had her. That could have been a, a jam down Mr. Patrick kind of like thing. Play. I don't know. <laughs> I never. You know, so funny, man. A lot of things with, with these guys, I never asked about i never went to him and hey why did this happen or why did this happen or oh they just hit you up to just hey man will you come be a part of this i don't even remember i don't know if i could have been in the studio because at the time remember i had a tv show man i was trying to do it all. i had a tv show i had a magazine called the streets uh so a lot of times i was out here trying to get stories and get people on the show and get videos you know because we had our little show on, on um straight from the streets was, was a shit first was of a w B, mm -hmm. I forgot, but we I'm had show there. Yeah. Um, so I was out there working just as much as all the other guys, man. I really, really was, man. Yeah, yeah. A lot of guys in prison used to always, when they got out, used to always come out. Man, straight from the street saved me. <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't know if that <laughs> saved you, brother. Man, saved you while you was where you was at. But I appreciate you saying what you say, man. And you know, talking to you, just you know, you get reminded of, you know. Here's the funny thing, no matter how much hate, and I know that's most of my career, that's all I saw, uh, there was obviously a lot of love too, because people would come to you, man, and I feel bad because you know you were so over and daunted with the hate. All these people would tell you all the things that they love that you did, and it's hard, like even when you say nice things, it's really hard for me to appreciate it. Still to this day, people have to say, hey, Hatter, it's okay for you to accept that, because as soon as you give it, I'll push it away and give it back. And I'm still that way to this day. And I, I think partially is because what Rick Party told me, always stay humble. Don't believe, in public enemy, I always said, don't believe the hype. Yeah. So I, I ain't gonna let you gas me up because I always thought it was a ploy if somebody was gassing you up. Oh, you this, you that. What you really wanna say? Yeah. So my brain was yeah. always like that. So you could be saying the nice thing, but my brain is internalizing like, what you what, really what's are. that person really <laughs> saying? You know what I'm saying? And once you train yourself like that for what, 30 years plus, yeah. It's hard, it's hard for years. Yeah, it is. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.